Hello, my name is Christine Luby, and I'm an Education Specialist at the Office of Early Childhood. Children's ability to recognize patterns allows children to think about the structure of the world around them. Measurement is a skill that is used on a daily basis without us even knowing it as adults. How can we as educators help children build the foundation for these important tasks in the early childhood classroom? The Office of Early Childhood is committed to improving children's outcomes and are excited to be able to bring you part three of the series on early mathematics in order to help teachers understand how they can strengthen math in their early childhood classrooms. In part one, we looked at number and operations of the Nebraska Early Learning Guidelines. In part two, we shaped your understanding of geometry and spatial sense. In part three, we will focus on patterns and measurement, as well as discuss data analysis in the early childhood classroom. As mentioned in our previous sessions, the Nebraska Early Learning Guidelines were created as the standards for early childhood classrooms across the state. Within the guidelines, the widely held expectations define where typically developing children ages three to five should be. When it comes to patterns and measurements, a child should be developing their knowledge of patterns by describing patterns in their environments and daily routine, as well as beginning to recognize duplicated and extending simple patterns using a variety of materials. Children should also begin demonstrating the use of measurement by using either standard and or non-standard measures, as well as recognizing that different types of measurements can be made, such as measuring something by height, length, or weight. Children show their development and understanding of these expectations by sorting buttons or beads by different colors, sizes, or shapes, or by making patterns with manipulatives. They can also show this by collecting objects from a group walk and arranging them by their attributes, or using measuring tools at a workbench or water table. The ability to recognize and create patterns helps children make predictions based on their observations. In fact, children are recognizing patterns in their day from a very young age as they begin to think about what happens during the day and then what happens next. Therefore, let's bring ourselves to order so we can help children prepare for more complex number concepts later as their understanding of patterns develop further. The first idea for children to understand is that patterns are everywhere. Patterns show up as either repeating or growing, and in order to be a pattern, they have to follow rules, much like the rules of numbers. Patterns can show up visually, such as in the tiles on the floor, They can show up as auditory patterns, like in musical rhythms, or the sound of someone walking across a hard floor. Patterns can be found in movement, like in dance. In temporal patterns, found in time, or days of the week, or months of the year, or seasons. Or in numerical patterns, such as odds and evens, or the base 10 system. Providing children with opportunities to recognize these sorts of patterns assists in their ability to notice patterns throughout their world. When thinking mathematically, there are different types of patterns. Repeating patterns, growing patterns, concentric patterns, and symmetrical patterns. Repeating patterns contain a segment that repeats. The repeating segment can be very easy, such as in a string of beads that alternate colors from red to blue, or as different as multiple colors alternating. Repeating patterns also might be one single unit that repeats, for example, a picket fence or the sidewalk. Growing patterns increase or decrease by a constant amount, such as in a number line. Examples of this include creating a line of stacking blocks, where each stack of blocks is one more than the previous stack. Concentric patterns are an example of a nonlinear pattern, such as those seen in nature, like in the ripple of a water, where there is a central starting point. Symmetrical patterns have segments that repeat. However, unlike the repeating patterns, symmetrical patterns are structured as a mirror image. Examples of a symmetrical pattern include snowflakes or butterfly wings. The next idea for children to understand as you're bringing order to their world of patterns is that as they are able to identify patterns, children will begin to predict what will happen next. 
This encourages children to extend their thinking from one situation to the next. Even though children may begin to recognize patterns, perhaps in the colors of the beads and the necklaces, and begin to copy those patterns by creating a string of beads like the necklace, they might not yet be able to identify the rule that governs the pattern. By not helping the children identify the rule, children are missing the foundation that will help them with more extensive or complex patterns later. As children become more confident in filling the missing pieces of the pattern, they become stronger at identifying the rule as well as extending the pattern. When children are able to start identifying the rules to the patterns, they move to the next big idea of patterning by becoming more adept at finding the same pattern structure in different forms. This takes time and effort to be able to make these sort of connections and relationships. One of the first ways children show their understanding of this is by transferring a pattern to other forms, such as from a visual or auditory form into a spoken form. As a child is looking at the pattern of the necklace beads, they might correctly identify the colors to repeat the pattern. Red, blue, red, blue. Then the child might be able to recognize that a pattern they find when they're working with shapes matches by going circle, square, circle, square. An even more advanced transfer or translation of a pattern would be to encourage the child to clap their hands for each red bead and stomp their feet for each blue bead. Regardless of the pattern, building the pattern foundation will assist children in their algebraic thinking later on. In addition to bringing order to the world of patterns for children, let's also see how we measure up with the understanding of measurement in early childhood classrooms. The first idea for children to understand regarding measurement is that different attributes can be measured, even when talking about the same object. When measuring objects, there are many different ways you can solve which object is bigger. For example, you might be measuring the length of a basket by measuring the height or width. Or, you might be measuring the capacity of the basket by measuring how much you could put into the basket. Think about the sand or water table experiences you've had with the children in your classrooms and their comparisons of different shaped containers. One child may notice that a long, slender container is taller than the other containers and therefore is the biggest. However, another child may claim a shorter, wider container may be the biggest. Children should have opportunities and experiences measuring objects both ways to build a framework for more adult-like measurement activities, including measuring things using ounces or inches. A second idea to see where you measure up is in the idea that children need to understand that measurement should involve a fair comparison. So when thinking about the situation of the children at the sand table, think about the language that you could use to help the children understand each other's perspectives as well as additional ideas you might want to share in order to extend their learning and understanding. Rather than comparing using the words biggest in this case, it might be better to use words like the tallest or the container that holds the most in order for each of the children to see the other perspective. Furthermore, it might be a good idea to try to compare objects by using that fair comparison. Perhaps that might mean cutting a string that goes around each of the containers to help the children see the variances in their circumference, as well as cutting strings that measure the height of each container. Extending the activity in this way allows children the opportunity to make indirect comparisons. When children are given opportunities with indirect and direct comparisons, it enables them to better understand tape measures. Understanding what makes an object bigger than another object is one thing. But when we find out how much bigger an object is, it allows us to become even more precise in our language. While as adults we think about inches and feet, or ounces and pounds, children need experiences quantifying measurements long before they are able to internalize these kind of conventional units. Activities such as using unit cubes to measure the lengths of rocks or pine codes, and then being able to count the variances in the unit cube measurements will help build this precision. The Nebraska Early Learning Guidelines provide expectations for teachers in order to assist with children's development in the areas of patterns and measurement. As a teacher, ensure you are engaging in conversations with children about quantity and comparisons as they are interacting with materials throughout the day. Use a predictable daily routine 
and encourage the children to predict what comes next. Engage children in conversations to think about what comes next in a pattern or sequence of events. And use measurement activities throughout the day, as well as provide opportunities for children to observe patterns everywhere. Additionally, there are many ways that teachers can intentionally support the development of pattern and measurement knowledge and skills. With patterning, there is a trajectory that most children follow in their understanding. First, children are able to recognize patterns. Then they are able to copy them. This leads to their ability to complete a pattern, then extend a pattern, describe or define the rules for the patterns, and finally translate their learning into other mediums. As you're working with children, remember these levels and differentiate your instruction to be able to meet the needs of the children where they are. When working with patterns, it's also important to think about the materials that are being used. Color is often the easiest attribute to pattern. However, shapes or sizes might also be something to consider for children as they are ready. Recognize patterns that the children make on their own and use language to help the children see that they've created a pattern. Furthermore, use language and self-talk to help children see the repeating patterns, as well as questioning for more advanced pattern makers, such as, what part repeats? Or can you think of another pattern that looks like this? Use the daily schedule, as well as the classroom environment, to help children identify and recognize patterns around them. Think about opportunities for patterns in artwork, or in songs or in stories. Help children recognize these as patterns to help build their foundation. In order to be more intentional about measurement in the classroom, think about the questions that you ask as an adult to encourage the children to be thinking about measurement. Use questions that encourage comparisons and engage children in looking at different attributes of an object. Set up activities that provide meaningful exploration of measurement. If children aren't engaged in the measurement activity, or if it is forced, they don't build the basic understanding that is necessary for later success. If you're looking for opportunities to engage children in meaningful measurement moments, you'll be surprised at the amount of opportunities that arise. Think about measurement activities you can add to the story of Goldilocks and the Three Bears, or how you can add measurement to lessons on planting seeds and watching the, their growth or even measurement of the children in the class as the year progresses. Within each of these intentional teaching strategies, it's important to have the necessary materials to help children engage in mathematical thinking about patterns and measurement. Be sure to include materials for children to play with of various sizes, colors, textures, and shapes, and encourage children to sort and compare. Materials such as blocks, beads, pegboards, matching games, measuring cups, scales, and unit blocks should be readily available. Provide children with opportunities to engage with technology that allows children to recognize and create their own series and patterns. Post a schedule in the classroom with pictures to help children understand what comes next. Provide children with materials that encourage measuring as well as things to measure, like measuring cups and spoons, balance scales, rulers, yardsticks, tape measures, thermometers, foot size measures, and height charts. So how do we assess children's learning when it comes to patterns and measurement? Using the knowledge that we have, as well as the materials in the environment, think about what you can assess based on these objectives. Teaching Strategies Gold, objective number 22, assesses a child's ability to compare and measure in a variety of forms by measuring and comparing objects, thinking about time, and recognizing data. While objective number 23 focuses on the child's ability to demonstrate their knowledge of patterns. Remember that assessment in the early childhood classroom should be observational and over time, and assessed through meaningful activities, such as when playing in the block area or coloring a design in the art area. When talking about assessment, it's important to know where the kiddos are going, especially as they move into kindergarten. Here are some of the Nebraska K-12 standards dealing with measurement. It's important to note that by the end of kindergarten, children will be able to demonstrate these skills. In the most recent revision of the Nebraska math standards, patterns was taken out of the early elementary standards for math. Patterns are less a mathematical topic 
than they are a defining quality of math. Mathematics makes sense because of patterns. Patterns allow us to generalize our understanding from one situation to another. So in the early childhood field, we feel it's an important stepping stone to later math development and skills, as well as language and literacy skills. Also, in the most recent math standards revision, a comprehensive statement was added regarding data. As the Nebraska Early Learning Guidelines are being revised, this standard will also be used to dissect math a little further. At its core, data analysis in the early childhood classroom involves helping children understand the purpose, interpretation, and drawing conclusions from data. Think about weather charts or snack preferences. Providing children with opportunities to collect data for a purpose, interpret the data, and finally help children gain understanding is the foundation for more in-depth data analysis that you do as classroom teachers. For example, think about the data you collect through your gold observations. You then use that data to enhance your teaching and curriculum in order to help the children grow and develop further. One of the best ways to support children's learning is by ensuring that subject areas cross. Here are some examples of children's literature that can be used to help build and develop children's skills in patterns, measurement, as well as data analysis in your early childhood classrooms. Just like in every other aspect of learning, remember that children learn best through experience. So make the books come alive and allow kids to explore math through literature experiences and beyond. As adults, we often need resources to support our learning. Here are some additional resources that you can use to help build and develop your skills in supporting children's understanding of patterns and measurements. These were also very beneficial in the production of this mathematics series. Based on this video, take some time to reflect on the following questions. We know that receptive understanding precedes expressive understanding, or that children are able to understand things prior to their ability to explain their understanding. So what kind of things can you do to check their receptive understanding of capacity or patterns? Within the literature list, many children's favorites can be found. How can you mathematize a story such as The Napping House by Audrey Wood or Brown Bear Brown Bear by Bill Martin Jr.? This concludes part three of Early Mathematics with a focus on patterns and measurement. The Office of Early Childhood continues to look at ways we can support our teachers who are developing the next generations of mathematicians. Thank you for your time and dedication to supporting Nebraska's littlest learners.